We start with some tragic news. ESPN has just learned that boxer Maxime Dadashev has died from injuries suffered during Friday's fight in Washington, D.C. This according to his camp, including his trainer, Buddy McGirt, who threw in the towel after the 11th round of that fight. Dadashev had been in a Maryland hospital since the loss to Sabriel Batayas. He was helped from the ring and threw up upon leaving. He was then put on a stretcher and taken out of the arena and transported to the hospital. Nadashev underwent a two-hour surgery to relieve a subdural hematoma or bleeding of the brain and had been in a medically induced coma. Nadashev, a previously unbeaten fighter, was 28 years old. Let's bring in Steve Kim, who's been covering the story since Friday and was actually at the fight. Steve, what can you tell us about what's happened over the last 24 hours? Well, uh, you know, not a lot of information could be released with the HIPAA regulations, with strictly prohibited um, medical status and things of that sort to be released to the public without the family's consent. Now, the wife who came from Russia, she did not arrive to Reagan National till last night. From what I was told was by Carl Moretti of Comp Rank that right around 6 a.m. Eastern time, he had gotten a phone call from the manager, Igus Kleinus, who told him at that point that it would only be a matter of hours before Mr. Datashoff would pass away. And then that news was confirmed by Donatus Genesis of Vicious. He was the strength and conditioning coach that was left behind to kind of be the point person and the liaison to everybody while everyone else had to leave uh, Maryland this past weekend. And it was confirmed uh, just about, I would say about, about an hour or so ago by everyone involved that indeed Mr. Datashoff had died. Steve, in watching that fight, did you have the impression that something should have been done before his corner threw in the towel? You know, I have to be honest. In that particular instance, I felt the stoppage of Buddy McGirt made after the 11th round, which is a very tough physical one for Datashev. I can't second guess it. I really can't. Let's bring in uh, first takes Max Kellerman, a long time boxing analyst for the network. Max, just your first thoughts on, on hearing the news today. This is a tragedy. I, you know, the story of Dadashev, he was fighting for his green card, basically. Every fight was hoping to become a citizen and eventually and bring over his wife and small child. Uh, he was a human interest story before the tragedy. And, and the fight, uh, you heard Steve just talk about it. You, normally, I can tell when a fight needs to be stopped. This is a kind of ring tragedy style fight. Generally, it happens when one opponent has a really good chin and a lot of heart, can take a lot of punishment, and is fighting just well enough against another fighter who's landing a lot of punches but is not a devastating puncher. So there's no obvious moment for the referee to stop the fight. Normally, though, that's how these tragedies happen. They're not like second-round knockouts normally by one punch. It's an accumulation of shots with a fighter with too much heart for his own good. Normally, by the middle rounds, you could say, whoa, this is getting to be a dangerous fight. I never got the sense of that in this fight. Now, when, he, when uh, Matthias landed the last shot that sent the Dashev reeling at the end of the 11th, I thought, uh-oh, I don't like the way the Dashev stepped, he, like he didn't know where the canvas was. There's a certain way that fighters react when you think something bad may happen late in a grueling fight. Um, and I did get that impression at that moment, but not before that moment. And in fact, right after that moment, the bell rang to end the 11th, and then McGirt stopped the fight. Now, I did think as soon as the fight was stopped, I was sitting with Mark Kriegel and Andre Ward and said, you know, we, they need to monitor this closely. This is the kind, the way he looked at the end. I didn't like it. And they agreed, yeah, I didn't like the way he looked at the very end either. And sure enough, as is normally the case in ring tragedy kind of fights, he starts, he starts needing to be held up on his way back to the dressing room, which normally happens. It's not right after the end of the fight, but even sometimes in fights where a fighter simply decisioned, in a kind of fight like that, he needs help walking, and then he feels nauseated, and then he starts vomiting, blood. That normally means there's pressure in his head. There's bleeding or swelling of the brain. And that was the case in, in, in this instance. I, I don't think it was that they took too long to get him to the hospital, though I don't know. I don't think that there was any culpability in terms of, even though there wasn't a perfect moment to stop the fight, people, you know, the ring doctor or the, or the state commission or the corner or the ref did a bad job. I don't think that was the case. This is just one of those perhaps unavoidable consequences from time to time of an extremely violent and dangerous sport that I love. Unavoidable consequences from time to time. We, we've seen this periodically go way back when Duck Koo Kim dying after a, a fight with, with uh, I think, Ray Mancini at the time. 
What ramifications does this have throughout the sport of boxing when someone dies from boxing-related injuries? Normally, again, normally you look at what went wrong, what could have been handled differently. I did not see an obvious uh, instance of that in this case. I, I, I presume that they, it will be taken, you know, did, what were, did they get him out of the building and to the hospital fast enough? Things like that. But I wouldn't say, th this wasn't even an issue in my view of a fight where some, sometimes a fighter's doing well enough to stay in the fight, but he's just taking too much punishment. I've even seen, I believe it was Prince Charles Williams, Marquis Sosa in the 19, late 80s maybe, where the fight was simply stopped by a conscientious state athletic commissioner, Larry Hazard, who was there saying, you know what, these guys have taken too much punishment. And I believe it was stopped and called a draw based on, on something like uh, some uh, um, too much brutality. Like literally, I, we can't say there's going to be a winner. This is just getting too brutal. We need to stop it. I did not see that. This fight as that kind of fight. The Dashev was doing well early, and though his opponent came on as the fights, as the rounds mounted, I didn't see a bunch of devastating headshots that would lead me to believe, or from the Dashev's reactions, this is getting too much. You did get the feeling, okay, the Dashev's just about had it, probably a good time to stop the fight. But until that final shot in the 11th round, I wasn't, my, 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 my uh, antenna weren't up in terms of, uh-oh, ring tragedy fight. So my short answer is, I don't know what you learn from a fight like this, other than um, it is a, a violent and dangerous sport, and it is a guilty pleasure and for me. And, and, and there are, you know, you have to ask yourself ethical and moral questions in times like this about, about supporting the sport. And yet I consistently come down on the side of I love boxing. I'm glad it exists. And, and this stuff happens sometimes. Nadashev previously unbeaten before the fight. A Russian, his wife reportedly on the way en route to the United States from Russia again. Max, with the very latest on the death of Maxim Dadashev because of injuries suffered in the ring Friday night, Dadashev, 28 years old.